My name is Brian Wood, Medical Director for the Mountain West AETC ECHO. Welcome to this week's session, and I will turn it over to today's speaker. So good day, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here and to see all your faces. I hope this will be an interesting discussion. We wanted to learn more about prophylaxis for herpes zoster among HIV-infected persons, and so we were able to look at some data from a study on acyclovir suppression to answer this question, and I'm going to share those results with you today. And this was published in JID, and so you can look up the full paper and see all the results. And, and in addition, I want to recommend the DHHS guidelines for the prevention and treatment of opportunistic infections, which are updated regularly and most recently in July of this year. So I'll go through the study background, methods, results, and the conclusions from the work that we did. So the risk for herpes zoster is 12 to 17-fold higher among HIV-positive persons compared to HIV-negative persons. And even after the initiation of antiretroviral therapy, it's two to three times higher. So an excess risk even with, with ART. There was an observational study, a small observational study in Paris among 39 patients with AIDS that found a very high dose of acyclovir, 2.5 grams daily, reduced zoster recurrence at 12 months by 68%. And the evidence for zoster prophylaxis among HIV-positive persons is limited. So we hypothesized that daily acyclovir prophylaxis would reduce the incidence of zoster among HIV-positive persons. And we were able to look at this question in data from the Partners in Prevention HSV-HIV Transmission Study, which was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of acyclovir, 400 milligrams twice daily among HIV-infected women and men in seven African countries. At baseline, none of the participants were receiving antiretroviral therapy, and they all had a CD4 count of greater than 250. And that was the guideline at the time when the study was done that they would start ART when the CD4 count was less than 250. And it's, it really feels like a very long time ago, given our test and treat approach now that has changed completely. But that, that was the guide, guideline at the time. So at quarterly visits over 24 months, Zoster episodes were reported since the last study visit and they were observed on skin examination and then they were recorded. So we have these case report forms every three months of over two years. And then we used survival analysis to estimate the effect of acyclovir prophylaxis on herpes zoster incidence in the acyclovir arm compared to the placebo arm. And we did not censor the data at ART initiation, so we could look at the effect of, of ART. And we analyzed all the zoster episodes in an individual and used robust variants to control for correlation due to multiple events per person. So, so people had repeated episodes of zoster. We used all the data, but we were able to, co to control for that, that it was from the same person. So it was a really nice size study, uh, 3,381 3, persons, of which 193 were randomized to acyclovir and then 1,688 were on the placebo, and there were no significant differences between the baseline characteristics of the two groups. There were 100 reports of zoster during follow-up, of which 20 were observed by skin examination only, and 66 were self-reported as occurring between the study visits, and 14 were both observed and reported. And of those 100 zoster events, 26 occurred in the acyclovir arm compared to 74 in the placebo arm, and the incidence in the placebo arm was 2.8 per 100 person years. And overall, acyclovir prophylaxis decreased zoster incidence by 65%, so a hazard ratio of 0.35 with the, the confidence intervals well under, well under one and a significant p-value, so quite a big impact of a, s a modest dose of acyclovir, 400 milligrams twice daily, preventing zoster by 65%. And I'll just go through uh, some of the tables now so you can look at some of the details of the study. And I, 
I wanted to share the details of the study with you because when we think about using acyclovir prophylaxis, we think about patients as individuals and we want to think about their gender, age, CD4 count, and so we wanted to make sure that these were all represented in the study, and then I'll show you a little later the subgroup analyses so we could see whether individual level characteristics will influence our decision making. And you can see that the characteristics were very well balanced between both the acyclovir and the placebo group. I won't go through them in detail. But also just to look at the prevalence of other physical findings were also quite similar between, between the groups. At, so these are the characteristics at, at baseline. And so this Kaplan-Meier graph shows very nicely the incidence of herpes zoster by treatment arm. And you can see there in the solid line many more individuals acquiring herpes zoster who were on placebo compared to the acyclovir group. And underneath are the number of people at risk, so robust numbers throughout the study. And this table summarizes the main effects. So for all zoster events, there was a significant effect, a 65% decrease in the number of zoster events, and that was significant with a p-value of 0.001. When we looked at only the events on exam, you can see that the sample size was probably too small to estimate an effect, so just 12 events in the acyclovir arm and 22 in the placebo arm, and even though that's almost double, the sample size wasn't large enough. And then the, for the reports of zoster, 16 versus 64, giving us a, a significant decrease in the number of cases of zoster. And so here are the subgroup analyses that I said we'd, we'd look at earlier. And you can see when you look by gender, male versus female, no difference. Age, less than 30 or greater than 30, no difference. CD4 count of less than or greater than 350, no difference. Viral load, really no difference. And very few people were on ART during the study. Post-randomization, we also did subgroup analyses looking at ART use in the prior period. And here there were very few events, and actually we had very few person years on ART for the study, but no events in the acyclovir group and six events in the placebo group when using ART. And we also looked for a modification of the effect over time, which we didn't see either. So less than 12 months or more than 12 months since randomization, uh, no effect of time. So we found that the effect of acyclovir acyclovir was not modified by gender, age, CD4 count, or viral load, and there was no temporal effect. Six cases of zoster occurred among participants who had initiated ART, and they were all in the placebo arm. And in fact, having zero cases in the ART arm meant we couldn't estimate a hazard ratio here in that category. For the six people on ART in the placebo arm who developed herpes zoster, the range of days on ART at first zoster report were three days to 77 days. So even though we have just a very small number here, the number of days are all less than, than three months, so developing zoster after starting ART. We did not observe an impact of ART on herpes zoster incidence, but as I've said, the numbers of participants were quite small with just a 124 and 155 person years at risk in the acyclovir and placebo groups, respectively. So overall, we found that acyclovir prophylaxis substantially reduced herpes zoster incidence among HIV-infected individuals by 65%, so quite a sizable effect, and it was not modified by gender, age, CD4 count, plasma viral load, or ART use. And other studies have found an increased incidence of zoster with declining CD4 count, suggesting that acyclovir prophylaxis for herpes zoster could be targeted at persons with a CD4 count of less than 200 who have not been previously vaccinated against zoster. I also wanted to note that in the study that acyclovir prophylaxis also reduced genital ulcer disease by 73%, so also an important effect of acyclovir prophylaxis. And immune-suppressed patients, some of our colleagues who care for transplant recipients, they standardly receive antiviral prophylaxis against CMV or HSV with either valgancyclovir, gancyclovir, val valacyclovir, or, or acyclovir. 
and all these patients have a lower risk of herpes zoster. And so herpes zoster is the cause of, of considerable morbidity among HIV positive individuals, including the sequelae, uh, including post-hepatic ne neuralgia, and therefore clinical guidelines could consider acyclovir prophylaxis. So in summary, we estimated the effect of acyclovir prophylaxis and found that it reduced herpes zoster by 65%, and clinical guidelines should consider this. So what do the clinical guidelines say? So for HIV, so they're, they're quite clear, for HIV-positive persons who do not have evidence of varicella immunity, so that's no history of chickenpox and no antibodies, they should avoid exposure. Um, we should vaccinate household members who don't have immunity against chickenpox. They recommend post-exposure prophylaxis with VZV IG, although for that you need an IND, and the average time of actually obtaining it is three weeks. But IVIG works equally well, and there's no, no reason to think that IVIG wouldn't work. And then short-term PEP with acyclovir or valacyclovir starting 7 to 10 days after exposure, giving them time to show clinical symptoms. Varicella vaccination is recommended for children who are HIV infected with a CD4 count of greater than 15%. And you can, can consider this for HIV infected adults who have a CD4 count of more than 200 who have no evidence of varicella immunity. And there are some rare cases of vaccine-caused disease and you would treat that. But long-term prophylaxis with acyclovir is not recommended to prevent zoster recurrences according to, to the DHHS guidelines. The vaccination guidelines are varicella vaccination, so chickenpox vaccination for people who are born in 1980 or after, who have not gotten two doses of this vaccine and who do not have immunity to the disease and have a CD4 count of more than 200. Zoster vaccination is recommended for persons ages 60 or older and have a CD4 count of more than 200, and herpes zoster is not an indication to delay ART, although there's a risk for iris of about two to four fold. And so we really wanted to open up the discussion. I'll just skip the, the special considerations during pregnancy, and I'll, I'll skip that slide, because I did want to give you a few minutes to talk about your own practice and whether you would consider acyclovir for herpes zoster prophylaxis, and I w wanted to share that in my own practice for patients who have a CD4 count of less than 200 for whom I'm initiating on ART. I do take a patient-by-patient -patient approach. If they have a history of recurrent genital ulcer disease or frequent oral herpes lesions, I do err on the side of prophylactic acyclovir for the first six months on ART, and I was interested to hear what other people, what other people do.